I just want to remind everybody that all meetings will be audio and videotaped. They'll be shown on the Town of Ocean's community cable channel, channel 22, on Verizon Fios, and channel 77 on cable vision. Roll call, please. Mayor Nakutani? Here. Council Member Chair? Here. Fisher? Here. Terry? Here. The notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act for this meeting have been satisfied, and a copy of the annual notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press and the Coaster Post in town hall and filed in the office of the Municipal Clerk on December 8th, 2022. We're going to start off with Barry's projects with Greg Lash, our engineer. Go ahead, Greg. Okay. Hold on, Greg. Oh. <laughs> He's got to get his notes. Too bad it was charged. Hold on. <laughs> Good. Okay. Greg, take your time. <laughs> the battery should die by the time you're done with your business. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'll talk and you won't have any though. questions. <laughs> It'll be good. Okay, first project, 2022. Slow it down, Greg. <laughs> 2022 road program. We're um, complete for the winter. They did not finish the concrete work on Roosevelt. He did not finish Walnut. So we'll that'll be, both be done in the spring, and it will pave the four remaining roads in the spring also. Did you tell our friends on Roosevelt? Yes, they know. Yeah. I think everybody was pretty happy. We didn't have really too many complaints. One person complained about how it was going to be left, but he did that in the morning. It was, it was restored by the evening, so I was, I was just going to get to it yet. So this is 2022. You're done. And then when we pick back up in... End of, like, end, end, end of March. End of March, we pick up again, and then we'll roll into 23? Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, tw yeah, the 23 program, uh, we're pretty much done the design. We're going to have the uh, resident meetings for the concrete assessments in January. Right. So to set those dates up with Jesse, and we'll send notices out to all the people. Okay. And then we'll do that, get those. Because in the past couple of years, we after COVID, we stopped having them in person. We kind of just sent letters, and that hasn't worked really well for us. So we're going to go back to the in-person so they can see the plans before we do the work, explain everything to them. It works much better. So based on what you're saying right now, it seems like we're pretty caught up here to on the, on the road program. No. I mean, where we are. In, where we are on, with the program. Date, like, we are caught up with what we've, what we've already uh, put money in for right. at this point. Yeah, we're pretty much. I mean, I know we're behind with the, number yeah, the numbers that we have, which we're going to address during the budget. But yeah. as it stands right now, if we're almost done with 22 and you're designing 23, we're clearly, yeah, we're you on know, schedule. we're on schedule. Yeah. Okay. And we just got a little late start because we had the, the budget was approved a little late this yep. past year, but. Because sometimes we'll get a little concrete work done in the in the fall. Okay. We'll get it out the bid in the fall usually, but we're not that. We we could have probably put it out the bid in December, but why get that? I didn't want to get this year's prices. I want to do it in January. When nobody has any work, and we usually get much better prices from contractors when they have no Agreed, work. Agreed, a hundred percent. Yeah. Just to follow yeah. up on on the mayor's comment. 22 is the only one open, or do we have things still open on 21 or 20? 20 and 21 are with the state to close out, but they're done. Yeah, we, we had the one we kept open because we did a lecture work. We had some extra money in, the, I think it's the 21 program, or we did the concrete curb on Bryan Court to spend the rest of the money in that contract. So that one is, was finished about a month ago, so that's in at the state. 20 is already in at the state for closing out. So and those are both processing. We'll probably be done with those in January, so we'll get that final 25% check. <clears throat> Anything else? Any other questions on the road program? Thanks, Greg. Next. The uh, next thing was the striping of the bike lanes. As you see, it's all done. Yeah. Corley's Monmouth Road's all done. We yeah. did all the police striping with center line stop bars, and we also changed the uh, five inlets for bicycle safe grades. So that was all completed about two weeks ago. Other, the, uh, what about, looks good. So two comments on that, if I may. If I may. Um, one, what about the other lining in town? Striping, excuse me. But we still have striping. To no, do. it's all done. But based on the contract we had, it was all done. Let me rephrase it. Other striping through town, not just the bike lanes. Yeah, all the stuff the police gave us. That's all. Really? Done. Yeah. Yeah. We still have. I mean, there's more work that we didn't have on the list that we're going to probably be on next year's list or whenever we do some more striping. But it's really we kind of let the traffic safety department come to me with that. Okay. And then when we have enough of it, we kind of put it out the bid. Rob, if we have other areas, we can yeah. definitely, I mean, for next yeah, year when we do the striping. Yeah, again. like Poplar Road is a perfect example. The center line striping on Poplar's going, but I didn't want to do that because we got Poplar's going to be in a road With program. The fire, right. So yeah. we, we'll do the first quarter of that, and then we'll try to do some temporary striping for the next year. Okay. Um, thank you. The bike lanes. I know I called you because somebody called me regarding the difference between the bike lanes on Monmouth versus the bike lanes on... 
Sunset or Logan, Logan or pick one. Um, they asked if we could share that publicly so that people understand the difference between the two. If yeah, we can put in a blurb in the, um, online, I'll can, do that for Can you so. draft something? Yeah, sure. So the issue was, why are the, if you notice, the ones on Monmouth are much bigger and there, there's no line. Greg explained that. You're that talking means, about the bike lanes? Yes. Oh, we talked about that earlier. Yeah. Because the, bri the riders, the shared room. Thank you. That's right. easy enough. Shared. Yeah, I was shared. actually, after I had mentioned this earlier, I, I was driving through Asbury. Is that Asbury. the same post that we were both talking about? Oh, no, that was a different one. Different one. Different yeah. One. Okay. I was driving through Asbury on a one-way street, and actually the shared Seamless. bike lane is in the middle of the road. Right. So that's kind of the, right? Yeah. That's the... And the reason that the, it's really fun to the MUTCD puts out the standards, or they put it out there because they want cars to have to almost run it over so they know that that's part of a bike lane. Yeah. Kind of alerts them to the fact because if you tucked it over by the curb, they would think the bike rider is supposed to be over there. But that's what happens when you don't have a dedicated bike lane. Mm -hmm. and that's why the ones on these ones where we have the dedicated bike lane are so much smaller because there's a white line there that right. cars are not supposed to pass, right. and a bike is supposed to only be in there. Right. Cool. Um, kind of like a shoulder. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to maybe put a little something out from the township. Hey, just want to let you know that uh, bike lanes have now been done on the following road. Because I have people who are like, what's going on here? You know, because mm -hmm. it just sort of happened. Right. Yeah. yeah. As did, in all of our defense, as did the others. They just yeah. happened, but they're a lot easier to figure out. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, it's easier to understand. Mm -hmm. Most people see there's a difference and don't know why. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll do something and put it on the website with Tracy. Thank you. Okay, the next one, uh, 1001 Wikipeka. We just installed the new beam finally that came in. It was delayed. So that project should start proceeding pretty fast now. We're just waiting on that to do any, everything else. We couldn't do the roof until the beam was in, and we certainly didn't want to start any of the interior work until the beam was in. But we ran into some surprises over there. So, mm -hmm. But everything's kind of under control now. Okay, next one. Um, the golf simulator we're going to advertise uh, next week for the second bit of the uh, golf simulator system. We'll get those bids in in January and hopefully get that awarded at the January meeting. Are we, are we hoping, I'm sorry, with any chance we're going to get more than one? No. <laughs> more but than one bid? Yeah, there's only one there's only company one that company makes that the, yeah. There's another company that makes another <laughs> a similar product, but it's nowhere near the quality. Yeah, Mike sure looked into uh, several different units, and the quality of this one is, yeah. is a lot better. He even went up to baseline to check out um, their equipment. And he likes this one a lot better for the golf simulators that we're going to use. So, you know, we'll have to go off his recommendation. I mean, he's gone around, he's searched it, and, you know, I'm going to trust his, uh, you know, his professional opinion on that. Yeah, and you can even kind of tell because the bid went out or equal, and the other company didn't submit an or equal bid. So they know they can't live up to the standards of this one yet. <clears throat> okay, the next one, the dredging projects. Uh, we met with the county. Um, for the Terrace Pond, Snell's Pond, and Fireman's Pond. And uh, we kind of hit a little bit of a snag, but the county said they would help us with dredging of Colonial Terrace. The, the timing of the projects were not kind of conducive the way they want to do them. They kind of want to do it in the spring, not over the winter, because they have problems with cold weather and all that good stuff. But the bottom line is it looks like if we use the county services, we'd be doing that in the springtime. And then they kind of want to let it sit for a while, then move it. but. For our later discussion that any of the dredges that come out of there because it's so much sand it doesn't need that much deep watering time so we would have them maybe move it out of the pond for us and we'll move it after it's deep watered up to the area between the fourth and sixth fairways and that's which pond or that's is it all, pond. all terrace oh yeah. to start just terrace, terrace mm -hmm. to start i think there was an issue too with doing them all at the same time yes that's the, the secondary the problem is they they don't want to commit to the the timing of doing all three in a row they, they've already told us they will not do Snell's Pond because there's too much private property involved. And they probably would put it off at least a year before they would consider doing firemen's for us based on committing their manpower. And Snell's it. Pond turns into a bit of an issue for us because of all the other retention basins that we have. For example, you take Cedar Village. Those are all private homes, and their biggest bone of contention that's been going on for the last 20 years is what are they going to do when they're pond needs to be dredged who are they going to go to how are they going to pay for it so 
this is why we have to look into some alternative methods for these ponds that are not necessarily the towns, but they will, they do help us with flooding. So um, we did speak with a couple of ideas that we're going to kick around um, getting into uh, next year into 2024, uh, which is something that we could potentially work on. And the owners the of the developments don't have liability for that? So the, the issue with Cedar Village is that's their pond. So when it fills up with sediment, they're going to be on the hook for that. Okay. Now, there's been discussion throughout the state. We've spoken to uh, the senator about this in regard to potential funding down the line to help out, you know, these individual areas that need help with their dredging. But think about the amount of ponds that we have that are retention basins that are private. I mean, there's a lot. We have to worry about our public ones, and we can work in conjunction on certain ones with the Lake Commission and the grants that they pull in. But when you look at a um, Cedar Village or you look at a uh, Snell's Pond, those are all private areas around there. So that's in essence their pond because their property goes into the middle of the pond. That's kind of what I was getting at. Why are we concerning ourselves with it? Because there's blue acres. We purchased two parcels around Snell's Pond that became blue acres. Okay. So, um, so that's now how they, we had does a it partial interest those ponds? in, in Ours Snell's Pond. Our two lots go in there just like everybody else's. Yeah, so we are a partial so owner, but not the reason why it came up is because now there's access to get into the pond. So, yeah, there's access, but we have to come up with something that's fair and consistent throughout the town before we go and make a decision on whether or not that Snell's Pond is going to get cleaned out. And by who? And by who and who's going to pay for it. Yeah. And I think you need to bring, make sure you bring the neighbors into the discussion because they're... Yeah, yeah. hey, we got an idea. <laughs> and part of the problem with it is, too, it's going to be an escalating situation with right. the ponds because part of the DEP rules are everything's going to wet ponds now. And the, the, the theory of the tension basin is pretty much gone. They want everything percolated back on into the ground. Perfect example is 35 and Deal. Those are all infiltration basins. There's nine of them on that property, and they're all infiltration. Don't think well the same problem there because it's commercial. They should have, have enough deep enough pockets to do their own maintenance. But those are the kind of things I think we're going to be seeing more and more into the future where these ponds are going to be needing cleaning out more regularly than the detention basement because that tends to flush things out. Mm -hmm. So it's our stream quarters, but... So as an example, I know, <clears throat> uh, back to Italian American, is that the same concept? We had to clean it because we got the bond and we have to do it, or is that something totally different? Remember you that's, guys had to come out and inspect it? Yeah. I'm just that, trying to draw an example. Yeah, an that's, that's actually a detention basin, but that had to be cleaned because of the sediment that got in. But yeah, but and everybody because, has to maintain those. There's our sinking funds for every detention basin that's approved in the town held by us, and we actually inspect those on an annual okay. basis. So sort of the same, but yes. different. Yeah. Okay. Next one, 1515 Logan. We've been discussing that. We met with um, Matt and talked about how we're going to advertise this. We've kind of come up with the conclusion we're going to put this out for an auction bid as opposed to a sealed bid because we make it a little better price. And Dave has found somebody that's, in, you know, an auctioneer, I guess you would say. So they we're looking to do that probably in February. So we can kind of figure out how we close everything up in March and cascade right into the building season. And the subdivisions have already occurred? Subdivision so that is approved. The only okay. thing we're waiting on is a, a flood hazard permit from DEP. We got our wetlands permit and we got our buffer energy permit. We're just waiting for the flood hazard area permit. So we're in pretty good shape there. We didn't get final because we want them to decide. We didn't want to give them a situation where they had five lots they had to build and pay taxes on right away. So we're going to, we left it as a preliminary subdivision and they can come in for a final in the steps they want to. One or two lots or all five at once, all six of them. That is the auction on one? The, the whole project. The whole, the whole project. project. You, so we didn't really subdivide and, and selling off each piece. It's no. one piece. We're going to sell it off of one piece. And we're going to also have a deed restriction in there that they can't reconsolidate the lots. We want them built as single family lots. Five single family lots, six. but one, one purchaser. Yes. Okay. Yeah, six lots. Six. So six, six was okay. the magic number? Yeah. And a detention and basin. And a water and quality basin. basin. <laughs> water quality basin, yeah. And that's that the would be controlled by them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next one is the um, crosswalk. We talked about Sunset and Maple. That will be in this year's the 23 program. So that will be installed. Uh, Deal Road sidewalks. That's on the north side of Deal Road between Carberry and Bow. That will be, um, we're bidding that in January for spring construction. Then the trail uh, 
between Roller and Sunset, we just received authorization from the state. We're good to go. They reviewed everything, so we're, we can put that out the bid. We'll bid that in January for spring construction also. Can we go back to the uh, sidewalk on Carberry there? Mm -hmm. Are we going to reconstruct that four-way stop at Deal Road? There was some conversation about doing that. Yes. We're taking out what I would consider to say that the slip road, the right-hand turn, as you're traveling north unbound. Mm -hmm. So that's going to go. It's going to go to a normal four-way intersection. So okay. you have to make a dedicated 90-degree right-hand turn. Okay. Just so people aren't flying around that corner. Yeah, it's terrible to cross yeah. over there. We're putting all the sidewalks and crosswalks, <coughs> and that was part of something that the Girl Scouts had come into town yeah. and asked us to fix that intersection. So that's part of the road program. So on the west side of bound, where it hits Steel Road, <coughs> the homeowner has a big. I guess there's sort of shrubby trees there. They do affect the light, this, you know, the, the site, site angle. The site mm -hmm. angle. I don't know what we have as a, you know, any recourse or anything, but it is hard to see because you come in kind of an angle, and I was wondering if that could be trimmed down. Well, well if it's in the right of way, we're going to take it down. Yeah. If it's on their property, we'll have, uh, we'll cut that down with their permission. Yeah, it's just, it's just terrible. Yeah. You, know, you come around and you don't see it, and you're like. I think most of that's actually in the right of way, so we'll be taking that okay. out. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sure they'll be thrilled with us, but that's that's what happens. Well, they just found out. <laughs> well, the house, you know, the house is set back, so it's not yeah. really a privacy thing. Right. It's just a giant a hedge yeah. landscaping that's sort of yeah. out of place anyway, to be yeah. honest with you. Yep. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll address that so yeah. that the site triangle is good. It's still going to be a four-way stop, so that helps a little bit, but it'll, yeah. we'll, there, the site triangle will be cleared out. And then the last thing I have is a 24 road program. We got a grant for phase one of Poplar Road for 157,000. So that'll do probably about a third of that road. Which way? A road about Poplar Road. We got a DOT grant. Which way? Third. I'm just curious <laughs> what you're thinking. You just divide <laughs> oh, it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start at the southern side because that's where all the improvements are. Because we came up Roller Road. Right. All the Roller Road is done. That right. intersection is being improved with the new signals because of the new firehouse. They're going to be tearing that road up. They already have torn it up. So when they're done, we'll come in right behind when they got that building built and paid that. So that whole corner will be very nice. And What's next year, we'll get the phase in on the phase. So over the next three years, uh, Poplar will be completed from one end to the other. What's going on with the construction there? They're slow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we gave it, I mean, we, they had, to we had a big problem with them getting their. Uh, there's like nothing for months. <laughs> well, they were having a big problem with their calculations because the guy that designed the wall, they weren't building in accordance with his calculations in his design. So we got him involved, so they had to rip it all out. And then when that time they got another guy to design it and build it the way they wanted to design it, and then they didn't come back for several months. And once they got the approval, it was still a month and a half, two months before they came back. Mm -hmm. Now they're going extremely slow. Yeah. I mean, they've been building that wall. They built the wall in the detention basin, but they've been building that foundation for about four weeks now. Yeah. But it should have taken about a week. I haven't seen anybody on the job in the last couple of days. No. We did have a problem with them a couple of weeks ago that we were after them all the time, and they were cleaning up the road, but their tracking pad was bad. Yeah. So we were, they had swept the road on a Friday. It rained over the weekend. They had a sweeper back out there again on Monday, and they did refresh their tracking pad to limit the dirt from off. But they're now t done taking dirt off of the site, so hmm. that should be much more limited. Any anticipated date of when this thing's going to be completed? No, it's just they're, it's all under their own. You can't, we can't push them really. It's you know, it's a bonded project. Yeah. And they go at their own pace. So they're not held up by any permitting or anything like no. that. No, no, they've been cleared to go for several months now for mm. everything they need. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, that's all I have. That's it. Uh -oh. I just have one question, and I should know the answer because I know we've talked about it. Um, the bridge. Brookside. Uh -huh. Brookside who, who's does. funding that? Who's I funding? had a question on who was paying for that effort. It, the, that, the township is writing the check on that. Is there a reason? That the township is, we're talking, that's the capital. Yeah, yeah. right. It's, it's a capital, capital, improvement capital, improvement capital improvement, so the town's writing the check. Okay, what makes it a capital improvement project if it's a well, anything, Personal. The, anything the town it's pays for is a capital project. I understand that. Yeah. What made us decide to pay for that bridge construction, I guess, is the question I was posed, and I didn't have an answer. Yeah. Improve pedestrian access, safety? Yeah, public it was safety. public safety. safety. Yeah, we had talked about that, and I think the... Yeah, it was a while ago. The, I mean, the, I just couldn't find my notes. At the board meeting that Matt and I attended, one of the gentlemen showed up there, and he said, they're, they're, we, I had told him in my testimony, he said it was a safety reason was 
a lot of people cut through our parking lot, even to the point where the police were very concerned, had a, close, a couple close calls over the years. That's why they built that fenced-in compound with the gates at both ends to keep people out of there. Okay. And I said, if they're still going through there, we want to build this. And he, he said, you're a liar. They don't go through there. But Jesse works on certain Saturdays, and she sees, <laughs> sees it. She <laughs> sees it. I see it, too, but, I mean, I'm not here all day. I just uh -huh. see it on occasion. But it's, you know, the people are still cutting through there. It's still a danger. And okay. Like Jesse says, people are now even on the scooters, even mm -hmm. harder to see them. Mm -hmm. So we just we don't need an accident in our parking lot when they're going all the way around the horseshoe. So that's a really the main reason is safety from our point of view to okay. keep them out of our parking lot so they don't get run over. The gist of it is if you want to walk on Saturday, a lot of these guys are walking to shul, you have to go all the way around. So it's this bridge alleviates that traveling all the way around. So it is an improvement for the majority of the community. I just wanted to ensure yeah. that we weren't setting ourselves up yeah. for precedence yeah. for any like request well, it was doesn't sound like it because they're yeah. walking through township property right. and creating a hazard on township property there's a bit of history here too because at one point I think the bridge was built without the township's approval so is that true remember well I don't think so. there was a crossing there yeah, yeah I think was, they went all the way down to the bottom and crossed yes yeah, so it was sort of a bridge, homemade this is going to be elevated yeah yeah okay but I think we have these situations in other places where for pedestrian safety like we have the bridge by lollipop bomb which actually isn't, and it was never designed to be a bridge, it's a spillway, a concrete spillway. But the problem is over the years, people have made a trail through there, and now that the water level was down, they're across that, but now with the crazy rains we've been getting, the water level's up, so that's a very slippery situation. It's a concrete spillway on a slope to the bigger lake, mm -hmm. and that's why we closed that, because you know kids back there with the moss, and it's a shaded area, it's a very slippery surface. That is one we are gonna be approaching probably in the next three or four years to have to reconstruct that. So okay. It'll take it's us a year to get project. permits, okay. but that'll be a capital project also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I had. <laughs> Rob. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned, the dredging of, no, good. you mentioned the dredging of the three ponds. Uh, any updates on uh, Whale Pond Brook? Whale Pond, we're waiting for, you mean the cleaning of Whale Pond Brook? Yes. Um, Those stages program. We didn't, uh, we didn't start with Whale Pond Brook. We started with Poplar Brook. Good cleaning. We're waiting for the proposal. You that mean the stream cleaning? Yeah. Yeah, he, he was supposed to give me a proposal last week. We're reaching out to him to get he that. hit him, I'm sorry. There's a company that we asked to give us a price to clean them with okay. a, a hmm. very long length of Poplar Brook because he gave us kind of what he thought it was, he could clean in a day. So we know we're going to be under the bid threshold. So he was going to clean a pretty good length of it if he comes in at that price. <laughs> and then what we'll do on a yearly basis, like we've kind of set a five year rotation, we'll clean out all the brooks that we can that are in the flooded areas. Like Poplar is the worst one that we have flooding. Whale Pond would be second, and then we're gonna get onto the west side of 35 in some of the commercial zones where we can clean out some streams. And I also, you know, I wanna clean out that brook. It's uh, part of uh, the Harvey Brook system is behind the Rouge Park. That, that brook and that stream corridor in there is, I'm sure is not very cleaned out and has a lot of desnagging could be done to help the flooding on the fields. Okay. So those are the kind of things we're looking at. But yeah, the first section is a healthy length of Poplar Brook. Okay. Um, any updates on, is this, I don't know if this was Higgins or his, uh, the, the signs at BJ's? At that was uh, Steve Higgins. I don't know why he got back to us on that. You weren't content with the finally they paved it. It's now his way. <laughs> <laughs> well, the signs that have been missing for a year. You don't know that you can get to 35 South if you're heading east on right. West Park, which would alleviate a lot of the traffic between the junk handle and, or the rampant 35 so the county, and there's no left turn signs county and state com combination yeah so and the signs for no left it. turn people <laughs> always <laughs> make that left turn into there dangerous yes government moves yes. slow for a reason uh i i'm sorry you told me and i forgot impervious surface we're doing that in january, january because you have to do have two meetings in the same month. That's what it was. Thank you. Which I don't think is true because oh. uh, Matt, yeah, that's Matt, what clar yeah. Matt clarified that on something else, but Jim Higgins didn't get the message, so we'll, we'll just do it in January yeah. to to get it all. I'll be in the I, I, have, have, <laughs> I have the draft in hand, so we'll circulate that between yeah, now. And yes, and please. He just, I would like to see that. Time to read it, and <laughs> absorb it, and absorb it. He and just sent me the revised. Huh? Yeah. So can you can you yeah. circulate that to yeah. the council after this yeah. meeting? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Then they can uh, they can take a look. And can I look at it too? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Until yeah, until. Hmm. Yeah, but it's make done. sure you mail it before January. Right. Yeah. Um, can you um, back to deal uh, the firehouse? 
deal popular and uh, what am I going to say, roll or the light. If they can't do construction, can you try to get them to do the light faster? I have asked Maurice about that again, and he said he would check again. But I, like I said, they're, they're, he's having probably the same problem. We are getting them going on the firehouse. They're not going to open up another can of worms with the light. That's probably more of a spring project anyway. They do have to have that done before they get their CO, so. Yeah, I it's, know. It's, but it's, it'd be nice to do oh, it before no, the no summer. question. If that left-hand turn would be really nice. It's a problem coming southbound on Poplar. Right. And left on the deal. Correct. Because it's, there's, the light's short. If anybody's coming the other way. You can maybe get three people. Maybe. Cars. Yeah. I went through here last night, and I was third in line. I didn't make it. Shoot. <laughs> 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 um, and that's not a timing of the light issue? Well, the light is short, but it's just really, it, it, there's, it doesn't take much traffic to, to, to booger up the left But do we have any ability to affect the timing with the DOT instead of waiting on the contractor? No, it's not that it would be us, but the, it, it's, it'd be better to wait for the left turn signal because the timing of the light is fine. It's just the left-hand turn. If, you, if we introduce the left-hand turn on both directions, those three cars will get through there. There's only three of us there. So, you know, it's easy to get the three through instead of making it longer because then deal will back up. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. The problem is you come to that light and you don't know who's supposed to go first. Right. So you're staring at each other. It's like a standoff, you know? Yeah. That's what the dicey. double lefts there will help mm. tremendously. It's going to break out the old uh, driving course. It's always a little confusing as to who has the right of way. Any updates from the county first went to the on light. the crosswalk at mm -hmm. Monmouth and South Lincoln? No, wait, they had their data. They were waiting for the design. I have a call into them to see where that's at, but... So they I think they can. That at our meeting. I know, right? Yeah. right the there. traffic guy wasn't there though, so. Oh, that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I do have a call into their traffic guy, and I'll get a hold of them and send you an email. So not thing. to put words in your mouth. So are you saying that they agree it can be done? They have design. They have a their, their recommended design, okay. whether we like it or not. But I'm sure if as long as we get a crossing at one of those two spots, we're probably happy right. with that. Cool. Stand by. I think I only got. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I just have one question for you. Somebody called me. Um, could you check on where Buckingham Drive is on the uh, road paving hierarchy? Okay. I got a call about that. <coughs> if you want to just tell <coughs> me about that. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Is, is that information something that we could release publicly? I mean, because I don't think that's the only person that's oh. been, where am I on the list oh, sure. five years uh, from uh, now? <laughs> no, I, 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 we we kind of went through this once before because I gave all the council a copy of my ranking system. Uh -huh. I don't really think you want to go public with it because then everybody's questioning it because there are times what happens with the list, roads are different lengths. And I, it's like a puzzle when you get the money we have, I have to go, Michael, maybe go down you know, 20 roads because you have 20 feet that you can do this time so you might have to add versus some a thousand foot road. Gotcha. So, you know, they're not, we don't want to be answering questions why you take number why. 20 when I'm number five. <clears throat> it's because the long roads, you know, I get the first long road in and then everything else gets puzzled together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll give you everybody here a list, no problem, but I really recommend we don't tell them, give it because it'll change. Yeah, it could change. It changes every year times. for once, but yeah. the, the other problem is it, I don't take, I can't take the top five roads off the list every year. It's usually we're dipping somewhere down into the 20s for those yeah. a couple shorter ones. The money. Mm -hmm. Along that same road, I, I get a lot of questions about the dredge projects and I've been giving updates to, you know, Laura McBride of the Deal Lake Watershed Alliance and other, you know, Mary Johnson in the Snell Pond, other people about Fireman Pond. Is there some way to kind of like publicize or just make people aware of the timeline of these dredge projects going forward? I would, maybe, well, I would probably recommend we wait until so probably the county gives up. Because remember, once we have a better handle on it. Yeah. Because yeah. at our meeting with the county, they said they want to check all of our data yeah. and the plans before they commit to doing it. Right. And they won't commit to doing it until they see that. So until they give us, once they commit to doing it, then we'll have a time frame. Okay. It also right sounds now, like they're only interested in one. The yeah, other two, they're kind of, yeah. they're trite right <laughs> off. Oh that's exactly what I heard. They were not, when I opened up the second set of plans, they were kind of, yep. you know, already looking away. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the mayor alluded to, we're looking at other alternate uh, ways of doing it. Okay. That one lady, Mary Johnson, never gave me her address to drop those things. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess it's a moot point right now. Correct. Am I correct? Or yeah, do you well, still? I mean, if, if I would probably, probably still like to get yeah, the permit sure. because okay. then we can say we're just logistically working out. Permit's good for five years. Okay, got it. So, All right, so I'll... Because I'll, uh, you can see how long it's taken to get these last eight signatures. It's been two months. I'll track her down. Sometimes the Outlook, you know, yeah. what, email, you, you lose. And it doesn't hurt to get, you know, a dredging permit, so it's... Yeah. At least it's in our hand. Any other questions for Greg? 
Anybody else? That's it. Greg, thank you. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. holiday. Everybody have a nice holiday. Likewise. 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 Likewise.
They do their own deer management, but they don't touch Wells Park. And that wasn't part of our drone study, right? So that well, the, wasn't even part of it. It's not our park. So oh. what they'll do is they'll put okay, that into the mix yeah. of Walter's their on. deer management. Walter's if we oh, institute we a deer management plan oh, yeah. for us for Palaya Park and all our other open spaces. Now they also- We have to go first? We have to put a plan in place before they go and handle anything in Wells Park because if we don't do anything, it's not gonna make any matters any better if they deal with Wells and we don't deal with anything on our end. And did you ever meet with the other municipalities that are touching, right? And they're following our lead they're, too kind of ish was the answer. Us. They're waiting <laughs> on us. And, you know, I think, and what we heard is like, they, he doesn't think that there's going to be a huge migration issue. It's really they've kind of nestled in these parks. He said it's like a quarter of a mile that they travel. It's or, not a big, it's like not that. a big, yeah. it's not like if you take care of a problem, let's say the golf course, because we went over there and we yeah. drove in. Now it was interesting. We didn't see any deer in the golf course. Mm -hmm. But boy, when we went through play a park, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, he's like, wow, you have a major problem here. Like, if you see this many out in the day, and he Well, they always thought that the study was under counting what right. was actually happening. Well, it's, I think yeah. based on what he looked, what he saw, he, he thinks the numbers are definitely, definitely skewed the wrong way. And it's, when we did this, you know, we went and looked at all our open spaces that, you know, potentially the state will come in and say, well, you got this area, and you got that area, and you got that. Like, there's a lot of different areas that we have to consider here. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, mentioned different methods, but we really, you know, the state is going to dictate to us how this has to go first, mm -hmm. and then we put the plan in place. And is that because it's state money tied to the response? Um, no, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that the New Jersey Fish and Wildlife is a council that's made up of appointees um, who are primarily pro hunting okay so they want to give hunters opportunities to hunt okay so they have the they make the final decision so so what's happening in Princeton have, have they, are they've they been doing, doing it for Princeton 20 has been years. doing hunch um, yeah. yes they've been doing the combined method okay in Princeton um, but they've been utilizing the sterilization method because they don't there's places where in you can't do a hunt in Princeton, right. like here. You so it's like a TNR, kind of like the exactly. cats. <laughs> the benefit of the sterilization is that if you get right. a female it deer, is. a female deer, if you, they can start reproducing within like the first year of life, and they produce, you know, one to two deer per year. So if you sterilize a deer in the first year or two of life, you're preventing like 20 deer, and they live for like 10 years or sometimes longer. So you're preventing like 20 deer from Reproducing. So you, you get sterilized one female deer, that's, you know, a big impact, you know, down the road. And that, so ultimately that's a, you know. And they're hunting one. Do they have that? I think we talked about. I mean, about. if you hunt one deer, you kill one deer. You don't. But the give back program. So oh, and then there's all. 100% give back. 100%. Um, yeah. So if in terms of hunting, um, uh, the meat is always. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, because Neptune and I heard donated. the food bank participates in the program, and I didn't know if it was the one with Princeton or if it was that one from way North Jersey. No, I'm no, no they count. He said they're in the program here. The ne our Neptune food bank is in it, but he said there were certain areas that they had so many that that they had to stop yeah. because they couldn't keep up. Mm -hmm. The process they called the process. The processing, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So I was reading stuff we, on. The look, internet. <laughs> look, it's going to be a very difficult decision, okay? But we can sit on our hands and do nothing like everybody else has and let it get completely worse, or we hit this head on and deal with the issue. I mean, and we really <clears> have to, we have to make a decision as a council. We can't sit and continue to kick the can down the road. There's, you know, there's a danger right now. Mm -hmm. um, the park, when you... We took that ride through the park. I mean, well, the deforestation, right? That's the other. Yeah. Part. Oh, that's a big part. part of it. Yeah. There's, I mean, there, the uh, ecological system of Joe Palea Park has been completely destroyed. There's no underbrush at all. You should there's see. There's no it. native it's, plants. It's all been taken it's over. It's unbelievable in how it's all there. gone. It's yeah. like when you drive through there, like you know, in now because the animal you know, habitats the, the are destroyed. Fell. Yeah. The little critters. The yeah. li I mean, the yeah, the little guys. No seeds. No nothing. Oh, good. On that topic, and I'm glad you reminded me because I thought about it. Can't we use open space to do that? Spend money to, to do clean what? up? Deer. Oh, not the deer piece. Clean it's up. It's not a cleanup. 
Oh, it's not. Yeah. Um, but because back it's only going to get age. destroyed again if you had too many deer eating eating the underbrush. So I'm not sure. Okay, I separate mean, topic. I'll, oh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure. It, it's not. It is, isn't, but I misunderstood it. So that's fine. I'll bring it up later. Okay. Okay. Um, Anything else? I mean, oh, I I met with um, Chelsea Maddie, who is a um, student in the high school, who is the younger sister of Jessica Maddie, who put the. Um, the uh, Monarch Butterfly Garden in Jill Palaya Park. She's currently taking care of it, but she was interested in doing a 5K race to raise money to um, make Jill Palaya Park better. So um, I put her in touch. We met with um, Jack Mamie. We're gonna co coordinate that with the Green Fest next year. I mean, I'm not gonna be here, but I'll be there. <laughs> but um, we'll coordinate that with the Green Fest. I know you've been interested in doing something yeah. like a 5K in Jill Palaya Park. 5K. What now? The other oh, tees to trees. Tees to oh, trees. Oh, I like tees it. To trees. Okay, love it. So yeah, maybe I'll, I'll put her in touch with you too, um, and I put her in touch with um, Amy McGovern on the school board who yeah, has had uh, experience running five Ks before. So not running five Ks, but running the whole. <laughs> Coordinating. She might be organizing. She probably has organizing. organizing. Thank you. Jersey Shore Run Club would come in and oh, just do best. it all for you. They're the oh, best. Yeah. Okay. Good they're to the know. They're the best. Good they'll run know. the whole thing. Okay. And they'll get people from all oh, over the that's place. That's awesome. Jersey Shore Run Club. On ours. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll Jersey Shore Running Club. They'll yeah. advertise it. Yeah. They'll put Jersey it on their Shore website. Club. There's Beautiful. people that just go from yeah. run race to race. And all the equipment for the yeah. timing yeah. clocks and everything. Oh really? Yeah. Do you mind if I put you in touch with her? She's great and very motivated. Beautiful. That's that's a good call because they'll do the whole thing. Yeah, they will. Yeah. And awesome. bring in a lot of outsiders, so you're not right. like just tapping yeah. our residents. Right, right, right. We have all this stuff. Yeah. Anything else, Doc? <clears throat> that's it. Okay. Uh, Rob. I'll leave that one for later. Um, housekeeping. So, can we? Dave and I discussed this yesterday. Um, on ordinances, mm -hmm. when we're kind of putting the no, kind of when we are putting them on the agenda. I know I had asked Vinny this and it kind of slipped and he was doing it for a while. Can we be a little bit more clear on what we're doing? Sure. Like, for example, the marijuana ordinance tonight? Yeah, sure. It's under license. Yeah. It's under what? Okay. I spoke to Jesse yeah. and we're, yeah, we we're, spoke about it. Okay. we're committed yeah. to changing it. Thank you. Um, we want to discuss Jim's email on COA and the 16 acres. The attorney would like to do that. I'm he's curious. He, he's, he, it's a contract purchase with the property. We should probably talk about that's it. That's fine. Good. I got another one. Kelly's emails. Um, she sent us three emails yesterday or today. That's all you got? <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. I was going to flip you, but I know I'm on camera. Uh, <laughs> that's why I could say it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought they were great. Uh, yesterday, whenever you sent Whenever they were. Whenever, whenever I got yeah, my internet yeah, back in my house. Yeah. I'm more than yeah. impressed with your emails. <laughs> so, you see, yes, you guys are just absolutely dealing with this for a long time. Next level. Careful, careful how impressed you are, because here's my thought. <laughs> Why don't we all do that? If yeah. we're attending a meeting, I mean, it doesn't have to be as great as hers. Maybe she can never, really it'll never be that great. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she can teach us. Do a little Look, bit. I don't even want I'm to I'm sorry. to be like Kelly, so I'm going to say But I think we should know what the others are doing so that yeah, they can yeah. be aware of what's going report tonight. Okay, well, I guess we'll just have to strive to be like Kelly. Yeah. Well, I, again, she's, I thought it was great. She sets a high appreciate it. Yeah. And, I, and I do like it. <laughs> I like information. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it. I like yeah. to share information. Yeah. So. Really good at it. Just uh, no responding. Anything else, Rob? Right. Don't respond. No responding. Um, okay, got it. That's the key thing. No, I think the rest <laughs> is, uh, just, I think I'm good. <laughs> All right, good. Dave. Jersey Shore Manus. What's that? Jersey Shore Runner, sorry. Is yeah, sure. Jersey Shore Running Club. Okay. Yes, uh, a couple things. So I sent you guys an email, but I did want to remind you guys, or at least talk about the planning board did approve the 28 uh, apartment complex on Norwood Avenue, the old footnotes building. So there's a little bit of the story. So um, five of the units will be going towards COA, which is great. So affordable housing. But I think one of the, the we've talked about this for a while, and I know Chris Siciliano talked about this for a while, that area, it's sort of a weird area. It is Ocean Township. You don't, you know, if you see it on a map, you don't think it looks like Deal, but it's not. It's actually Ocean Township. I wouldn't call it blighted, but I've called it needing of improvement. So this is a huge step in the right direction. And I know this plan has been kicked around for, what, four or five years now? But I think this could be a catalyst for getting that area moving in the, in the proper direction. So it, it was an important decision, and I'm finally glad that this thing came to fruition. Um, Second thing, I see you all have gotten your official copy of the master plan. It is officially done. Um, so from the planning board side, at your leisure, 
feel free to read through this. Uh, there are some suggestions in here, um, but it is the council's job to then take the suggestions and make ordinances to go forward for the future. So, suggestion on that because I did read it page like cover to cover. I kid you not. It's a great document for history too. Mm -hmm. You learn an incredible amount about our town and what we have and the properties and just numbers. It's I think that document is great. Um, I suggest you do thumb through. You don't have to read, read it like me. I just wanted to. I thought it was very interesting. I highlighted a lot of stuff in there, um, but it is. It's 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 very good document. Yeah, I mean, this is something that doesn't happen every day, so it does give a good inventory of what's going on in the town. There are some suggestions in the future. Uh, as I've said before, Ed DeFilio did some wonderful uh, add-ons about things that are conceptual in nature that may not be something that's happening in 2023, but maybe in 2030 might be at relevant. So take a, take a good look at that. And I did want to recognize uh, all the people, the uh, Recreation Department, DPW, the Christmas lights over yes. by the library, which they said couldn't be done, mm -hmm. looks amazing. One yeah. person said and it couldn't I, be and, done. And um, yeah. I have heard from more people in town how great mm -hmm. that looks. Mm -hmm. yes. So I think from a township standpoint of trying to, you know, bring the community together, it yeah. was a home run. Absolutely. So well done yeah. to all the departments. Definitely. And if I have, I mean, my parting wish is to keep those lights up at least through February. And because the slide, please. <laughs> slide, please. And the, I would, I bring the slide back. Uh, Make it a permanent slide would be, She wants the slide back. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Yes. Uh, I like the train. <laughs> I missed it. I, I rode the train. It. I like the train. <laughs> We're, we're going to have reindeer pass <laughs> lane next year. Yep. We've decided reindeer. part of the deer management plan is to <laughs> Kelly, go ahead. incorporate them. Big anything. I think I shared everything um, okay. as part of sitting. I, I also sided in on the tree commission um, just for situational awareness and uh, the Human Services Council meeting. Both of those formal minutes will come out on uh, January 4th, I believe. So when ah. um, the commission is mm -hmm. meeting again. There was a question. I don't know who to ask it of. Um, I talked about the community garden, and I would hope to mm -hmm. continue that. I'm going to send you all the documents that okay. we've had. The community garden, um, the the, uh, the gardening club um, folks have had gone around and, and actually um, to different towns to look at and, and interview how they they put their mm -hmm. community gardens together. We've kind of looked on the ground a little bit up by the human resources department. Um, possible areas we could put a community garden in um, but I'll send you all the documentation one about question that. specific was from um, an area over by Middlebrook that I guess was was looked at for that it was deemed unsuitable and I thought because um, it was because of through traffic or something but I didn't have an answer for him um, so next time they convene why wasn't that deemed a good spot for a community garden and I thought because it was private property with access why mm -hmm. we could not make it a community garden there, but I told him I would. I think is this Steve? Oh, was the if, question? If it's private property, then well, yeah. which is that was my knee-jerk private. response is that it was I probably private. That was that was um, yeah. But I couldn't swear to that. So that's that's Unless the real answer. Some sort of deal with them or like the this is historical. He said it was looked at previously okay. and, and it was discounted, and I'm assuming it was private. That's probably the answer. Yeah. I don't know okay. Township would want to get involved in trying to run a however that work. Okay. Go. Okay. Anything um, else go? Uh, no. Okay. Um, let me give a quick update on a few of the meetings I had. <coughs> so, facilities <coughs> meeting Greg hit 1001 15 15. We mentioned Kepwell about the signage. The signage will be put in along with once Greg can square off because he's going to design. A little bit of a change up there where Bound and Cold Indian come together to square it off so that you have a 90 degree turn as opposed to the way that the cars just roll off of Cold Indian down Cold Indian. So it is a safety issue. We were also looking in where Way Cake is to put the crosswalk over there to get over to the park. Um, the fence is up and it looks fantastic. It's like a completed park now. Um, I believe Mike is looking into, um, you know, the demoing of the building and getting into the next phase of this project up there at Kepwell, which is a ways off, but at least we have some plans. Um, 
the dog park, we also met about that. We had an issue with the placement of the dog park. Um, David has been on top of uh, Commissioner LaCitra with it. We finally met with them uh, this week. And they have agreed, you know, we're going to do a few improvements over there, but we would really like it to be closer to the road and closer to that existing parking lot. We did not like it. Not that we disagreed with the county commissioners. We just weren't in agreement with where the placement of that park was. We felt that it should be away from the tennis courts, closer to the street, near that uh, existing little like park. Like the dirt lot? Mm -hmm. the, the, the dirt lot, dirt yeah, lot. that mm. we can dark. expand. And dark. Right, yeah, dark so dark. We'll, we'll expand and do what we have to do over there. Um, they will design it through their inside engineering department, and we offer to have Greg assist if he need, we need him to do anything. Um, we spoke about dredging. Mayor, can, um, I, can I yes. add on to mm -hmm. that? Because I just got a call before I walked in the room uh -oh. from Mike Patrico, <laughs> who called Andrew over at the Mount County Recreation Director. There is some environmental issues as you move further over away. There. Okay. So I don't know anybody hopes to get up high. We we may not hit our mark, but I don't think we'll be as close to the tennis court either. Okay. So we'll find somewhere in the middle. All right. So we'll we'll yeah, figure. So we're out. waiting for them to get back to us. Okay. Very good. Um, we were obviously we've mentioned town hall. That's uh, you know we're looking at the properties right now to see what we can potentially shift and work on. So that's still a little bit off. Uh, Greg, myself, David was away. We had a meeting with the DOT to follow up on the questions that we brought forth. The main issue is Deal Road uh, going west. Um, there's a log jam there of cars, especially in the center lane, because there's only one that goes across uh, 35. We had suggested that there be two lanes to go across. You don't necessarily need the one that just goes right. Yay. So <laughs> I'm stuck in that all the time. Well, their issue was receiving on the other side of 35. Right, there's no space. They are okay with it as long as the uh, Greg has to reach out to uh, Paramount to discuss them putting in the permit. They, it's not going to back up their permit, but it will help us out with the road. So it's just a matter of discussing with them so that we can alleviate that. And I believe that Paramount bought the property across the street. So I'm looking at them potentially designing so that we do have a lane over there that, that does receive the cars because that's the major problem. Cars are still going in that right lane and I use it about four or five times a day and it's so aggravating because I know where to go and I know these other people to the right of me know where to go, but they just play it and they go all the way up and then they shoot over and it's turning into a bit of a problem. So we're gonna work <coughs> on that. Uh, there's also that cement hump with the, with the cones, which is absolutely ridiculous. So uh, Greg mentioned something about a clamshell or, or something that they could design. So they're gonna look at that as well so that, you know, this is gonna be a problem during snow season. It's just, it's going to be a major issue. Even Greg brought it up. If a plow blade hits that, and these guys are going 35 for it, believe me, I drive one, so I know what it's like when you hit a curb. And those guys, somebody's going to break their teeth. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, that, that goes up. It's like a curb. So you're going to look into that. We asked him about the smart lighting. It's uh, adaptive lighting. Um, Highway 35 right now is not into the mix. But they are going to look into optimizing uh, the cycle of the lights, which um, we mentioned that, you know, Greg mentioned that uh, even cycling the lights a little differently could potentially speed up the flow of traffic. Um, we mentioned Armstrong Boulevard. We're going to speak to the county about that as well because that was an issue that popped up to potentially put a punch out there so that cars can go out and get onto 35 as opposed to going back towards West Park Avenue. So. That's still in discussions on there with the DOT. Um, they'll get back to us after the first of the year. And that's what I have. All right, from my public, Jack, we lost our, our other visitor. She had to go sing. She had to go sing? She was Carol. She was going to be putting out uh, at uh, Middletown and also, I forget the other place. Uh, a group that uh, that say something to do with the high school, so, but it was in the newspaper. It was in the Asbury Park Press or the Coaster this past week. So I don't know exactly what happened to you when you talk about it. I 
that was the subject. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Jack. Thank you all. All right. Motion to go in closed session. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody that our Township Council meetings will be audio and videotaped. Can I have a roll call, please? Mayor Napolitani? Here. Deputy Mayor Donlin? Here. Council Member Zachera? Here. Fisher? Here. Terry? Here. The notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act for this meeting have been satisfied, and a copy of the annual notice has been sent to the Asbury Park Press, and the coaster posted in Town Hall and filed in the Office of Municipal Clerk on December 8, 2022. Can we please stand for a pledge of allegiance and then remain standing as we give a moment of silent prayer, especially for one of our residents that just passed away, who was very instrumental in the community, Anthony Snooky Desposito, passed away last week, or actually two weeks ago. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. You may be seated. For our fire exit procedures, we have two emergency exits on the right that will take you to the front of the building and another one on my left that will take you to the rear parking lot. All cell phones must be turned off. If you have to make a call, kindly step outside and make the call. Make sure that your cell phones are turned on silent. We're going to start off with council comments. So let me start down there with Councilwoman Terry. Um, it's just a congratulations to Ocean Township and the various departments that pulled off a lot of holiday celebrations over the past week. They were phenomenal. I didn't get to attend them all, but I did see pictures for the ones that I could not attend. And great job. Thank you, Kel. Deputy Mayor Margie Donlin, my doctor, who's going to give her final report as our new Assemblywoman-elect. It's very bittersweet, but I want to echo what uh, Kelly Terry said about our team uh, putting together a phenomenal holiday. Um, two menorah lightings, the Christmas tree lighting, um, definitely some of the best celebrations that we've had in Ocean Township uh, so far, and they continue to keep getting better year after year. Thanks to all the volunteers who came out even last minute, at least as we uh, had to deal with the rain dates and that sort of thing. But um, I know Vera loved it. She loved the big slide, and we all love the tree lights, and I'm hoping to keep them up at least through February. Um, I also want to say thank you to two um, wonderful women in town who put together an event called Light Up the Dark on Saturday night, bringing our community together of a night of unity and hope in support of bringing the hostages home um, who uh, are, are in Israel, or not in Israel, but should be home. Um, Marissa Lambert and Efrat Rosman, Ma Rosmarin, who uh, put that together. And that was a great community event bringing people together. Um, since it is my most likely last council meeting, unless we have a special meeting at the end, um, I just wanted to say a few words of gratitude. It's been the honor of my life to serve as a councilwoman here in Ocean Township. Um, unlike the others here, I didn't grow up in Ocean Township, but when I came here, I knew this is where I wanted to raise my family, live my life, and retire forever. Um, I want to be here, and I hope my kids continue to want to stay here as well. It's an incredible community built up with so many wonderful people, um, and it's really the people that make this community of gracious living. I want to thank the former mayor, Chris Cisliano, for giving me the opportunity to join his team when we ran together in 2019, and to the voters of Ocean who elected us that year. Chris said he wanted somebody on the team, or anyone on his team, who didn't have an axe to grind. I've never had an axe and I wouldn't know how to grind it. I really enjoy working with everybody and to get things done. Um, as a liaison to the Shade Tree Commission and the Environmental Commission, I loved working with those members, getting things accomplished, including our tree ordinance, reestablishing the green team, pushing to revise our stormwater ordinance, and getting our dredge projects closer to completion, among other things. If I start thanking everybody, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to leave somebody out, but I would like to say I have all the gratitude in the world to our clerk, Jessie Joseph, for everything that she does, our former clerk, Vinny, to our police chief, Sorrentino, and the entire police force to, for keeping us safe, Jen and Mike for making this the best town to celebrate and come together for all occasions and events and to play and enjoy our outdoor spaces. 
to Steve Higgins, everyone in Public Works for keeping our town clean and the lights shining bright, to Greg Blash, the township engineers, Ron Kirk and community development, Billy Trees, Tracy Berkowitz for keep being the glue to, for all of us, Tom Rue for getting our meetings out there um, and all our, of our events as well, to our township attorneys, attorneys, Marty Arbus, Matt Good, basically everyone who makes Ocean Township the incredible place it is to work, live, raise a family, and we really do have a special team here, so it's been an honor to work with everybody. One of the best decisions I think we made as council um, was hiring our manager, Dave Brown. Um, one of my favorite decisions was appointing the first woman judge in the history of Ocean Township, Lisa Krenkel. And I think a close second would be appointing Kelly Terry, who's done a phenomenal job in such a short time as a councilwoman here. When they say you want to get things done, ask a busy woman, and, and she defines that. So, um, It's also been an honor to serve with Rob and Dave. I know we don't always agree on everything, but we're always willing to have a discussion about it. Um, and I love Ocean's nonpartisan form of government. It allows us to focus on issues and people and not politics. I also want to thank our mayor, John Napolitani, for being a great servant leader to our town and moving us forward, even when it's not easy. And last but not least, I want to thank my husband, Ron Vernicola, and uh, he holds down the fort every Thursday night. And our, our daughters, Amalia and Vera, who, who uh, know how important this is to mom to be here to serve. I know you all continue to do great work for Ocean Township, and I'll always be here to help however I can. So thank you. Thank God Ronnie had that practice for the Thursday nights, because now he's going to be a lot busier yeah. with the kids. How <laughs> <laughs> you go down to uh, Councilman Fisher? All right, so first I do want to thank uh, all the departments, DPW, OTPD, uh, the Recreation Department, all the people that volunteered. This was one of the, we had to cancel twice this year, so our holiday celebrations were uh, a little dicey, but they pulled it off. Uh, a resident expressed some in said something very interesting to me. So if you drive down now by our library, we've lit up all the trees, and it makes this place really feel like a, a beautiful community. And I, I give everybody, because I it was told, we were told we couldn't get it done. So congratulations, everybody. We did get it done. Um, I do want to wish everybody a happy Hanukkah. It's nice, nice last night. A Merry Christmas. Now, Margie told me last night she didn't want any fanfare. I said we should have a celebration. She said don't do it. <laughs> but I will say this, Margie. I enjoyed, I enjoyed serving with you. We've had a wonderful time together. Margie and I ran together for the for me the first time. She'd had a little experience, so to me, her and I kept looking at each other like, is this what we really want to be doing? But lo and behold, two elections later, and for her three, uh, we're still here. So I wish you the absolute best in the assembly. I know you're going to do great things. Don't forget your friends in Ocean Township. We need you, we love you, and we wish you the best. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Councilman Chair. Uh, I'm going to echo what everybody else said, so I'll keep it short. Margie, all the best. It's been a pleasure. Um, we've uh, we've, we've certainly fun. butted heads, but uh, we both walk away with the smiles on our faces. So uh, we know it's in the best interest of Ocean. So uh, all the best in the assembly, and I echo what they've uh, said. Don't uh, don't forget us, but we'll be knocking on your door probably more than you're knocking on ours. Um, also, the, the uh, uh, celebrations uh, this month, uh, the, Hanukkah, the Hanukkah menorah lighting, the Christmas tree lighting, the blessing of the crash. Uh, great job to the recreation department as always. Uh, happy Hanukkah to the Jewish folks out there and uh, Merry Christmas if we don't see you for those uh, that are celebrating Christmas. Uh, and again, I'll echo with, uh, I forgot which one of you said it, the uh, light up the night, incredible event to be able to bring uh, the entire community together for a um, unity meeting. I was gonna say rally. I don't know if that was a rally, but very well done and uh, great program. Uh, I think I'm done. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Dave. Thank you, Mayor. I just uh, quickly just want to uh, send my well wishes and all the best to our Deputy Mayor, now Assemblywoman-elect. It was a pleasure working with you and serving on this dais with you and look forward in your new role and working with you there as well to the benefit of the Township of Ocean. And also just to everybody, a, a very happy holidays and a very happy and safe holiday. Um, and just everybody just enjoy the holidays. This is a crazy time that we're living in. Thank you, sir. Matt. Oh, I'll just echo everybody else. Mark, <laughs> Deputy Mayor, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for everything you will do. And uh, David will be in touch when we need more money. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yes, <laughs> echoing the sentiments of everybody, uh, I really have to thank our recreation department for the wonderful job that they did putting these events together. The coordination that came together, not only with the council, but with our priest when we did the blessing of the crash, we did our menorah lighting, so we had to coordinate with the rabbis. And then, of course, we did our Christmas tree lighting, and it was an absolutely fantastic event. I want to thank Jack Serpico, Ser Serpico Pyrotechnics, who donated that fireworks show after the tree lighting. So we did a tree lighting, and then we did multiple tree lightings, and then we had the fireworks show go off. And it was an absolutely fantastic event. There were well over a 1,000 people there. And it was just great. There were so many different things that they put together for the kids. I, you, you just couldn't ask for anything better. And I have to say we have the best tree lighting in the state. There's nothing that beats it. Um, 2024, we're going to be celebrating our 175th anniversary with the official anniversary on February 21st. Uh, we have a plan to get together uh, first week of January to start planning for this auspicious occasion. Uh, we'll be working in conjunction with our um, Chamber of Commerce, the Council, our Rec Department, Police Department, and um, we're going to en enlist uh, the assistance of our, um, uh, our Historic Society as well because they have all the facts and figures. Um, we also are going to be looking for sponsors this year as we want to beef up our events because this is a special year. 175 years is fantastic. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. Um, I want to thank all of the township employees from the police department, rec department, uh, road department. They have just done an absolutely fantastic job working with our administration and getting everything done. And hearing the word yes from mostly everybody that's gotten into a position is a great breath of fresh air. Because when you heard no for so long, you don't think things can get done. But when you get new people in place with new ideas and they're invigorating, they want to do the right thing. So I cannot thank this group enough. We've got a phenomenal team that works for the Township of Ocean in 2024. is going to be an absolutely fantastic year for us. Um, I also want to echo the sentiments on my <laughs> deputy mayor down there, Dr. Margie Donlin. Um, she made history. You know, this is bittersweet for us. I mean, I became friends with Margie, and uh, it's it's been fantastic. I've known her husband way longer than her. But Margie and I got very friendly, and she's been a great person to work with. But she is the first female doctor elected to the New Jersey State Assembly, and that is a huge feat for not only the state of New Jersey, for Margie, our township of ocean. So Margie, congratulations on being that first woman female doctor to get elected to the state assembly. She's gonna do great things out there in Trenton, I guarantee that. She is a rock star, so we look forward to seeing some great things. Um, we will be, two things I just wanna mention before we open it up for public comment. Number one, uh, we'll be moving resolution 23-246 off of the consent agenda that'll be voted on separately. Oh, 2332, why is mine say? Oh, 23, which one? 232 and 23246. They'll be pulled and voted on separately. Uh, there's an ordinance on the agenda this evening. I expected to see a few more people in regard to cannabis. I just want to give uh, just a quick a synopsis of some things that went on 2019 there was a vote in ocean where we did our uh, vote for medical marijuana and it passed 52 percent to 48 percent the following year the state of new jersey did an adult use question that passed way higher with 65 percent in the township of ocean to 35 percent in favor it's a difference of almost two to one and that was with an 82 percent turnout so I just want people to understand that when they get up and speak, we will be giving five-minute limits to people to get up and speak on all items, including any agenda items as well. Ordinance items will be discussed during the individual ordinance adoption and discussion. So without further ado, I am going to... Uh, da, 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 no, no, we're going to open it up for public questions. So... All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine by the Township Council and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. 
There will be no separate discussion on these items. If discussion is desired on any item, that item will be considered separately. The purpose of the public portion is to solely ask questions to understand resolutions that appear on the agenda. All questions not related to an item on the agenda should be asked during the public comments section at the conclusion of the meeting. If anyone has any questions in regard to the consent agenda or the two items that were shoved to the side to be voted on separately, please stand up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Seeing here none, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Roll call. The chair? Yes, except resolution seven, letter G. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Uh, individual action. We have resolution, is it 23? First 232. Resolution 23 232. Do I have someone move? I'll make a motion to move resolution. Oh, wait a minute. Let me read it first. Authorizing a shared service agreement with the City of Plainfield for Chief Financial Officer Services. Motion. I'll make a motion to Second. Move. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Abstain. Napolitani? No. Uh, resolution 2346. Uh, <laughs> Authorizing a shared service agreement with the borough of Bradley Beach for Chief Financial Officer Services. Someone move. I'll move. Second. Second. The chair. Oh, sorry. The chair. Me? Yes. Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Abstain. Napolitani? No. Individual action vouchers in the amount of $15,635,491.63. Someone please move. I'll move. Second. Second. Roll call. A chair? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Ordinances up for adoption. Ordinance number 2440, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 5 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Ocean 1965, implementing new state law requiring owners of business and rental properties to maintain certain insurance coverages. Someone please open public discussion on Ordinance 2440. I'd like to open public discussion on Ordinance 2440. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2440, please step up to the microphone. State your name and address for the record. Seeing here none, do I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2440? I'd like to make a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2440. Second. A second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2440. I'd like to adopt Ordinance 2440 and publish according to law. Second. A second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Motion pa uh, ordinance passes. Uh, ordinance 2442, which is an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 9 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean 1965, entitled Soil and Tree Removal. Someone please open public discussion on Ordinance 2442. I'd like to open public discussion on Ordinance 2442. Second. Second. Echera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2442, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Seeing here none, do I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2442? I'd like to close public discussion on Ordinance 2442. Second. Second. Roll call. Sorry. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Uh, action on Ordinance 2442. I'd like to adopt Ordinance 2442 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Ordinance passes. Ordinance 2443, which is an ordinance amending Chapter 5 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean 1965, 
entitled Licenses, Someone Open Public Discussion on Ordinance 2443. I'd like to open public discussion on Ordinance 2443. Second. Second. Roll call. Yes. Donlan? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neblutani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2443, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Mayor, can I speak from here? Sure. <laughs> I don't want to have to get up there. Um, all right. So um, I'm going to let the others speak about the health and safety challenges um, regarding the uh, sale of marijuana in Ocean Township. Um, I'll concede the vote is probably going to pass, uh, but I would like to discuss the process on how we got here. Uh, first, I'm not against anyone using marijuana. That's a personal choice. Every person has to make their own. That's fine. Uh, as far as having access to it, residents can literally go across the street to Neptune and get it. They go 2.6 miles down the road to Eatontown and get it um, if they desire. Again, their choice. Heck, if they want, they can even uh, have it delivered to their homes. So access is not an issue. Um, since I've served on the council uh, the last nine years, we've um, unfortunately taken the approach of fire, aim, ready. Um, we don't always plan thoroughly and tend to jump the gun on a number of important votes. Um, I think marijuana could be added to that list, and I hope it's not. Uh, in my opinion, this is a quality of life issue. A uh, little history. The mayor talked about it. I'm going to, I think, clarify it a little. Uh, over five years ago, the town council passed an ordinance <coughs> banning any marijuana establishments in town. That included cultivation, manufacturing, distribution, and retail, among others. We received widespread appreciation from the town at that time when we did ban it. Whoops, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, the council, while Chris was mayor, uh, while Chris Cisliano was serving as mayor, uh, on a 3-2 vote passed an ordinance permitting the facilities um, for cultivation, manufacturing, distribution, but not retail. Uh, the mayor and I had voted no, primarily due to the vote of the Ocean Township Human Services Council, our Drug and Alcohol Alliance, which is the local ex experts that we lean on for advisory, advice from, for the town council. Uh, we did not want to see uh, who, they did not want to see any marijuana facilities in town. Human Services Council once again reaffirmed that position and voted unanimously not to have marijuana in town. Uh, now the fellow council members are looking to, in my opinion, rush the ordinance through to allow for a retail sale of recreational marijuana in town. Why are we doing it in December at the least attended meeting of the year? Um, I'm going to say if I didn't post it on social media, I don't know how many people would have even known this uh, ordinance was being issued. Uh, voted on tonight or introduced uh, two weeks or last month. Um, so the ordinance title doesn't even say marijuana in it um, and we fixed that. It just says licenses. So again, even if you were reading the agenda and looking at the title, you may have not known it was coming up. So if I could ask uh, to have, let me go back. So if I asked if I could have individuals come to do presentations, um, on the health benefits, the negative effects, and there's pros and cons, I get it, there's two sides to this. Um, we weren't gonna have presentations. Uh, we've had presentations on deer management where the council jumped on the opportunity to have experts come in here speaking pro and con, um, but that wasn't gonna be allowed for marijuana. I don't know why. Uh, we had a packed house for that meeting. We might have been able to have a packed house for this if it's that important. The residents may not think so. Um, I don't know. It could have been politically expedient to do it for the deer, maybe not for the marijuana. Uh, I would question what's more important, the lives of humans or the life of deers. deer. Um, while we're on the topic of deer, the township did conduct a referendum to determine if the best way to handle the deer issue in town. Um, the uh, mayor will tell you that the state already conducted a referendum, which he already did, um, that could we could extrapolate the results to determine how the Ocean Township residents voted. I got to correct you on that, Mr. Mayor. So that referendum took place November 30th of 2020. The question that was asked on the referendum, do you approve amending the Constitution to legalize a controlled form of marijuana called cannabis? Only adults at least 21 years of age could use cannabis. The state commission created to oversee the state's medical cannabis program would also oversee the new personal use cannabis market. Cannabis products would be subject to the state sales tax. If authorized by the legislature, the municipality may pass a local ordinance to charge a local tax on cannabis products. A yes vote to support this constitutional amendment to legalize the possession 
and use of marijuana for persons ages 21 and older and legalize the cultivation, processing, and sale of retail marijuana. Nowhere does that referendum ask anybody in the state or especially in the town of Ocean whether or not they approve the sale of marijuana in this town. They may want it to make it legal, but they did not say that they wanted to have a sale of marijuana in town. Um, I'd like to take, so at this point, I'd like to actually make a motion to withdraw this uh, ordinance from the agenda until we've had such time where the res residents can speak their voice and that we can have a referendum for the sale of recreation of marijuana in town. May I ask for a second? Anticipating that I wasn't going to get any, uh, I will move on. Uh, okay, let's talk about the financial side of the ordinance. Uh, the mayor has mentioned that uh, it will increase revenue, and I concede it will. I don't know how much, uh, but it will definitely increase the revenue in town. But the question would be at what cost? I asked the town manager a couple of weeks ago to gather information on the sales from Neptune Eight and Eaton. Five minutes. I don't get five minutes. They do. I don't. No. <laughs> We're not. We're, we're John, we are not doing them. that. We're not. Well, I'm almost done. John, we are not doing that. Neptune generated right around a million dollars, Eaton Town approximately 326000 over a 12-month period. This is based on the collection of a 2%... 2% from the gross revenue. I believe the mayor has said that Ocean would also be able to generate a million in extra revenue. I'm going to question that. While the actual number is anybody's guess, don't let the numbers fool you. $100,000 in additional revenue equates to about a $10 less in your average home, to the average homeowner in tax savings. While any savings is good, given the state of the economy, one has to ask if $10, $20, or even $30 less per year is worth it. That again should be up to the residents to decide, not the council right now, and in the form of a referendum. The state recently cut, this is as recently as yesterday, the state recently cut the cost to enroll in the medical marijuana program by 80%. Why? Because the residents are moving to recreational marijuana. Shocking, I don't know how all those sick, pe sick people magically got healed, but the marijuana, medical marijuana is not being used as much. But take it to the next step. It's all about supply and demand. Yes, the sale of recreational marijuana in New Jersey is growing at about 10% increase each quarter. But the executive director of the state of New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Commission, Jeff Brown, just last night on Spotlight News said that as the market develops and there is more competition, prices are going to drop. That means revenues will drop and so will the amount of money Ocean Township will see. Even our neighbors in Pennsylvania get an ounce of marijuana at $18 an ounce compared to New Jersey at 42. Again, Mr. Brown stated, with more competition, prices are going to drop. The market will require the state to lower their prices. These numbers represent over a 200% difference in the cost of an ounce of marijuana between New Jersey and Pennsylvania. That means the possible reduction of 200% in tax revenue. Right now, the cost of an ounce of re recreational marijuana is $300. But we cannot base our projections on that number since, again, it's only going to go down. Almost done. I will end this while... Five it, minutes ago. Easy. I will end this while, standing, while attending a session for government leaders at the League of Municipalities a few weeks ago in Atlantic City. I was told that prior to voting on any ordinances, town should be considering the following topics. The governing body should host a community meeting to gain residential support. We did it for deer. Why not marijuana? The planning board should develop a plan first before the council takes a vote. Yes, we updated our master plan, and it does include a fermentation district, but there is a lot more that goes into the sale of marijuana than is outlined in the master plan. Why are we skipping that step? What is the specific use of the funds that we're going to be collecting? Do we have a plan? Will any of it be used for education of residents? Will we permit drive throughs Did you know you could drive through and get marijuana? I had no idea. It's technically legal in the state. Are we going to allow that? Right now, we're approving one license. Will the council agree to limit it so that we uh, will not increase it beyond one? All right, I'm done. Um, I do have somebody that is going to, that Jesse's going to call. Well, they can wait because I'm going to say a few words now. As for this ordinance being rushed, far from it. The ordinance was not rushed, couldn't be rushed. Marijuana discussions have been in place for many, many years. 2019, we did our own referendum. We did our own public question as it relates to medical marijuana, and it passed. That was for the sale. Now, like I said earlier, it passed in the state of New Jersey, in the county of Monmouth, with 
62% of the people in the municipality voting. 65% voted in favor of adult use. Use, not sale. 35. I let you speak. I didn't interrupt you. So now you'll let me speak. Thank you. Yes, we do pack a room for cats and deer. There's not a doubt in my mind that if we were to put it out for the deer, we would pack it up again. This is no different than 1933 when we had prohibition with liquor. My grandfather was one of the first liquor license holders in the city of Asbury Park. We are in prohibition right now, and we're getting out of it. It's no different. This is a new revenue stream. The residents in the, in the Township of Ocean have voted clearly in favor of it. So not only do the residents agree with it, but there's also the potential, and I'm not saying any numbers right now, but there are a couple of people out here that will give you numbers. There is the potential of a significant revenue stream for the Township of Ocean. I've asked this council back in July, Councilman Achera, included, where is your additional revenue going to come from when we're short on the road program and we have contractual obligations to our police, public works, and everybody else that works in town? I need an additional revenue stream. This is one way to get an additional revenue stream. I asked Councilman Achera to come up with his idea and there was not one given. That's not true. I gave you. You gave the me deal, deal in thirty five, but that is a, a year. that is a property tax. Three hundred six hundred. This is an additional stream that was coming online anyway, Rob. Six hundred thousand. It's year. an additional stream of revenue, and it's approximately a hundred million dollars over there with two million in taxables. Okay, that's how that works. Twenty percent of the two million is four hundred thousand dollars for the town. The rest of it goes to the school and the other areas that we have. That's all I'm going to say right now. So we will open this up for public discussion. <clears throat> yes, sir. State your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. My name is Max Hollins. I live at 38 Tudor uh, in Ocean Township. I'm, I'm a resident. I didn't really prepare anything to say here, but based on... What's being talked about, I did want to get up and speak. I was uh, last year awarded a uh, social equity uh, cannabis dispensary license, and I've been struggling to find a location to, to open it. Um, my goal is to open something that's safe and well-regulated. I want to be part of the, the positive end of this industry. I want to eliminate the black market, which is still out there, because there are still very few cannabis dispensaries in the area. Um, to speak to the revenue will drop over time. It will when competition comes in. I think as a township, our competition is the other townships that are opening up their dispensaries and they're getting their revenue stream from that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to, to hear that you guys are considering doing this. I would be more than happy to give my 2%. Um, and really, I, I had emailed uh, all of you guys earlier this month, um, you know, I would even be someone who would want to, you know, being living in town, first of all, I don't want the big companies to come in. I wanted to go to a small business, but I would very much be willing to get involved in any other way, be it with some kind of dare program or whatever, as, you know, an owner of this to, you know, distinguish the difference between marijuana and other drugs and you know not for nothing but we sell alcohol in town and alcohol takes more lives uh, is more dangerous causes more problems um, for people so i just wanted to be heard on that thank you thank you anyone wishing anyone else wishing to be heard
Yeah. Mm. I was going to stretch my mic. Want him to come up here and talk? Tom, if he talks from here, I don't know how he's going to give me a single. Text me, Tom. If I give him the mic from up here, will you be able to see him? Yeah, because he could see us. We can plug the mic into the floor. You want, he can use mine, Jeff. Richard, Richard Neal, 175 South Street, Eatontown. Richie, you can go up close to the mic if you can. Thanks. Right here? Yeah, okay. that's good. A um, little bit about me. Um, you know, I'm a hydroponic master grower, indoor cannabis. Uh, I, was one of the, one, I was the first retail cannabis uh, CBD hemp store in Monmouth County in the Eatontown Mall. I had a retail shop in there. I run a brand now um, since 2018 we were in there, and then when COVID came, it got shut down, so we've been doing everything on e-commerce. I've been living out in Cali uh, before that, growing under Prop 215. A um, little bit about cannabis. I don't know if you know, but in about 1991, there was a major discovery called an endogenous cannabinoid system, and it's within our body. And we have a CB1 and a CB2 receptor within our body, and that's what binds the cannabinoids in the plant, and that's what makes it work on us. Uh, THC as a cannabinoid. So when you smoke it and there's THC in it, it binds with our endogenous cannabinoid system and it gets you high. CBG is also a cannabinoid, so is CBD. So that's why when you, when you smoke CBD, it doesn't get you high, it's non-psychoactive, but it helps you, it numbs you, it takes away pain, takes away anxiety and stuff like that. So that's, that's the reason why and back in the day it was treated for over 2,000 medicinal purposes, but nobody knew why. Now in 1991, a scientist doctor discovered the cannabinoid endogenous system within our body so that's the uh, the reason why it works on us that's you know that's the whole thing about it me I own a micro license I own a cultivation micro license I own a retail license and a manufacturing license I've been in this industry for 30 years I've been arrested I've got caught with 16 pounds of cannabis I've been you know I've been in a lot of you know a lot of trouble because of this plant part of this whole reason of giving the legality of it is to give back to communities and people that are social equity applicants that actually were affected on this plant. Um, I'm a big advocate for it. I, I actually live for it. I'm in the culture. I breed it. I have plants and genetics back in Cali. I'm trying to get out here and breed things for people that can't sleep, that have pain, that, that you know, insomnia. There's a lot of uh, ailments people have that this plant can help. And my main thing right now is to try to open up basically like, like a microbrewery but for cannabis, I want to be able to grow it and sell it all within the 2,500 square feet I can sell out of a retail shop. And I don't want to just get people high. I want to help people more than anything. It's not just about money for me. It's about helping people. And um, I think you guys should really consider that because this is a miraculous plant. And we have a God-given thing in our body called the endogenous cannabinoid system that works with only this plant. So... It's, you know, it, it has a lot that can help people in this world, and I'm somebody that can actually bring it to life and really help people, not just make money. But on top of that, you will be making a lot of money and revenue with the right product. I want to do something that's craft, and it's going to sell for a lot more than what's selling in these other dispensaries. 
It's just like the, the beer right now. You go buy a craft beer from a brewery, it's more than your Coors Lights and your Michelobes and your everything else. Same thing with the cannabis that I grow. It's top notch, it's gonna get a premium, and it's gonna help a lot of people. Uh, you know, I, like I'm just to let something out, I'm reading something right now that will put you to sleep. CBN is another cannabinoid. It puts you to sleep. So when you have a strain that's a high, high bred CBN strain with a little THC in it, it's gonna help people that have insomnia or can't sleep. And that's stuff like that I can't even talk about, but there's other things for other ailments that people have, tumors and cancers and stuff like that, that can help people a lot. So don't just think about of uh, getting people high because it's really not just about that. This plant is a miraculous plant and there's a lot to give and a lot to help people with. So that's, uh, that's what I'd like to say. I'm, I'm a resident out here. I've been here my whole life and I'd like to open up a micro retail shop with my licenses. I've sat with the mayor back in February in his office. He invited me, I showed him my license. He's seen my brand, it's a very high-end CBD brand. So I treat my cannabis brand the same way as I would treat my CBD brand on a very high end. And uh, that's all I have to say. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Richie. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? We just have to push that little red button. Push the red button to turn it. Right there on top. You two are much younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I know many of you. Uh, my name is Beth Baggins Tabola. I grew up here in Ocean Township with uh, my six younger brothers and sisters. Uh, never in a million years did I think that um, that 12 years ago I would be starting a huge cannabis company. Um, initially, it was really just an investment for me. I was looking at the, is it working? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I also have six, six children, so uh, ranging in the ages uh, from 27 to 16. So um, certainly always have been very concerned about um, you know, the use with children. Uh, this is Tanisha Victor. She has worked with me from the very beginning. And Lino Chomishvili. Uh, we uh, wanted to talk to Ocean Township. It was very important to me. Uh, we all grew up here. My family is pretty well known. My father was on the Board of Education for many years. And uh, my parents still live here. Um, one of the things that I think uh, I, I, I brought it to my own attention today, thinking about these smoke shops that are all over Ocean Township and all over a lot of our communities that are selling things like Delta 8, Delta 9. These are uh, hemp-derived products that are actually uh, many times get you more high and are not, they are not tested, they are not taxed. So Ocean Township currently has five smoke shops that I decided to secret shop today before I came here. Um, and I do have a bag of products that does smell a little bit under my seat there. <laughs> um, and and we, you know, we could bring them up. Um, but these are Delta 8, Delta 9 products. I was not asked for identification when, when I bought these items. And uh, I went to three different shops, and then I found this one mini mart too, which is um, in a very well trafficked uh, shopping center here. Um, and Nina, would you mind just grabbing the, the bag? Because I, I, I'd love to just show show you guys the th the products that are out there that are unregulated, that are currently being sold in Ocean Township. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably just. Give it to you, Mayor, just to, just so that you can sample. Uh, <laughs> this is nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, this stuff's being sold in town right now. It is being sold in town. It's being sold on Route 35 mostly. It's being sold in uh, Cobblestone Village. Um, Legal. To so we're a couple of uh, additional spots. So. But again, uh, I did walk into one, and I said, do you sell weed? And they said, yeah, what time do you want? So um, it, you know, I'm, 
I'm part of a national group, so uh, we, we ran a public company um, that uh, we ran more than 100 stores, we ran 24 cultivations and 18 manufacturing facilities at one time. I am a speaker nationally um, as an expert witness in marijuana, and I want to see it done right in Ocean Township. I absolutely hate seeing Neptune and Eaton Town eating Ocean Township's lunch as far as tax dollars go. And uh, apparently, based on that, they're eating our own lunch. <laughs> yeah. Well, I only bought a few items, and you can see that it's uh, it's quite a bit. It's quite a bit. Um, Tanisha, absolutely. Uh, I live in Neptune, so I'm local. I grew up in West Long Branch. I went to Shore Regional. I lived in this area my entire life. My stepdaughter attends uh, Intermediate. She's been in the school system since she was in elementary school. Um, so, you know, I have vested interest in this community as well. And I've seen, you know, a lot of people obviously we, to, to the point of some of the individuals came up before uh, their lives ruined by this plant. And I think it's finally a chance, to your point, um, to kind of vindicate some of that here. And uh, I think that there's great benefit that can come to the town from a tax perspective, but from a community perspective. Um, if, you know, when you're a cannabis operator in town, there's a ton of community initiatives and things that you uh, pour yourself into, and that's always been a specialty of ours. Uh, we've invested well over a million dollars over our career into the communities that we've operated in, uh, aside from whatever tax revenues would come from uh, the business. And I think that's something to consider uh, when you're uh, considering ch choosing a partner for your town and uh, things of that nature. I think that it's very important that you are not just in the community, but you are of it. Thank you. you know, did you want to talk about I just education? want to add to it. Um, well, the education is what I told this lady is that it's very important for people to um, understand what we do and uh, what is it really going on inside those stores. If you let us do the right way, this won't happen. Can you imagine underage kids going in any shops and smoke shops and find this? It's more dangerous. I can't even explain what's going to happen, you know. And uh, letting us do this right way, I think it's the right way to go. And Ocean Township um, community, 82% you mentioned, wants this, so why not let us do it the right way? And one, one more thing I would like to add just about these products is that there are a number of articles, and you can just Google it, um, that uh, there has been secret shopping in South Jersey, in particular in the Philly area, they did it. Um, there were pesticides, um, there was mold, um, and, and fentanyl in, in these items that were sold in these no shops. And I, I also wanted to let you know that um, many of these products are sold in the shops. So I only went to a few of the shops that I researched today. Beth, you can give these to Rob outside <laughs> later on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rob, I'll, just, I'll be waiting for you outside. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrea Zapsik. I'm uh, 131 Coolidge Drive in Brick. I am the prevention director for the New Jersey Prevention Network. We are a public health agency that provides training, technical assistance, and support to the addictions field throughout the state of New Jersey. Um, I am also a councilwoman in Brick Township. So tonight I'm going to kind of put aside my NJPN hat a little bit um, and talk to you a little official to elected official. Now, I also brought some stuff with me, not anywhere near as fun and cool. <laughs> NJPN has produced a, a, a book, a toolkit for municipal leaders, just to, if, if those considering what you're considering tonight, whatever, regardless of what decision you make, there are some public health suggestions to take into consideration in order to focus on protecting your residents. And I will leave them with your team. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. So Councilman Chara, Mayor, you kind of took some of my best stuff, so I'm really going to be brief tonight. You read the, Councilman, you read the, the ballot question, so I'm not going to repeat that, but there was a lot in the ballot question that wasn't asked. NJPN last year conducted an Eagleton poll uh, with a representative sample of New Jersey residents, adult eight, adults 18 and up. Among the questions asked was, for each of the following locations, please tell me if you feel smoking cannabis should be allowed there. 
66% said no to beaches. 63% said no to parks. 61% said no to college campuses. 71% said no to public places in general. These I'll results very closely mirror the percentages by which the ballot question packs, right? And it suggests that while most people believe that cannabis should be legal for adults 21 and up to use, they don't want to see it everywhere they go and they don't want to smell it everywhere they go. So I know that we talked about the tax revenue and it's a big consideration. I'm an elected official too, okay? But competition is an issue. Right now there's only 21 retail dispensaries open in the state of New Jersey. However, through October, the CRC has issued a total of 87 more annual retail licenses and another 768 annual conditional licenses, which means that any one of those 768, they, want, they, they find a location, they get their paperwork in order, they go right to the top of the list for consideration. So in the next few years, we're looking at an awful lot of con uh, competition in the cannabis market. I won't talk about the price per ounce, we've already covered that. I do want to talk a little bit about the League of Munic Municipalities. I don't know how many of you attended those League sessions, they were very, very enlightening. If you were there, you heard elected officials from other, other towns that have allowed retail complaining about illegal pop-up shops, mobile bud vans, unlicensed retailers gifting cannabis. Effectively, by allowing retail cannabis in those towns, these officials sent a message that their town was open for business, and now they're stuck trying to rein in these illegal operators. There was no relief or suggestions given for, for those officials that raised this concern during those sessions. There was also a session for tax collectors and tax assessors that I attended. And you may have heard the presenter talk about the ways in which some cannabis businesses are already trying to game the system and avoid paying the taxes prescribed under the law to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're only a year and a half into this program in New Jersey, and it's already the Wild West. I would urge you to visit the CRC's webpage under Cannabis Businesses to see the violations among the license holders listed just since adult use the adult use program launched in April 2022. These are multi-state operators who theoretically should know better. Now finally, I'd like to leave you with this because we've heard about alcohol a couple times tonight. The rationale for, legal and cannabis for adult, legalizing cannabis for adult use was that a well-regulated market would provide a safe product supply for adults while keeping it away from youth. Well, alcohol and tobacco are two other well-regulated markets. You have an example of that tonight with the products that they've brought in. They're being sold in smoke shops, in gas stations, in convenience stores, and they're sort of being in this gray area because they're supposedly hemp-derived. We have alcohol and tobacco, two well-regulated markets, and yet we haven't been able to successfully keep them out of the hands of youth. Why would we think the cannabis industry could do any better? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Councilwoman. Good timing. Perfect. Good. Train. John, uh, Rob, you want yeah, you want to? Yeah. Anyone else wishing to be heard? She's dialing somebody in, John. Uh, you want to come up while she's waiting to get them on the line? It's up to you, Mayor. You say, it's fine with me. Oh, it's raining now. Okay. It's John. Hi, John. Hold on one moment. I'm putting you on speakerphone. Okay. Let's see if we can hear him. John, can you hear us? Hello there. There you I go. Can hear you. Can you hear, can everybody hear John? Okay. Go ahead. John, you're on. I'm not going to do an introduction. We're going to make it quick. Okay. My name is John Davio. I am the Director of State and Local Affairs for the, uh, the Spark Approaches to Marijuana. And I just thought I'd weigh in a little bit uh, about the uh, idea of uh, getting out of your opt-out, your marijuana commercial sales opt-out. A couple of things that I 
wanted to mention. First of all, uh, a couple of months ago, the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City came out with a study on the economic benefits and social costs of legalizing marijuana, uh, selling it commercially. What they found is, is that after legalization, average state income, not at the state level, right, grew by 3%. John, John, we got to cut you. It's five, uh, the five-minute limit if you want to just wrap up for 30 seconds. I'll just wrap up. One of the things you're talking about is this high-potency marijuana. We're working on a report in New Jersey where about 84 uh, of 
the nicotine of the marijuana vape products, the THC potency is 84%, which is about 10 times higher than it was even just 30 years ago. We're also seeing from that report that most stores are not asking for ID, not asking for an age requirement. <clears throat> so we've got a real problem with both the industry trying to sell the kids and of course the impact on kids and the tax revenues aren't worth it. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. You're welcome. You want us to bring the mic closer to you? You can take your time. <laughs> you see that? Don't rush up there, Rich, please. Do you want take to your time. We've got all night. Do you want to sit down and. I have to stand up. I can't. I can't This is our former deputy mayor, Rich Long. Didn't start see that, yet, right, see, Kelly? see that? Okay. You already started the clock. All right, your time's up, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Rich Long. I, I live at 1308 Logan Road in the Wanamassa section of Ocean Township. There's been discussion tonight about the amount of THC that's in the uh, average uh, marijuana cigarette. I want to give you some statistics. I hope you'll bear with me, but I hope you think a lot about what I'm saying tonight. I hope you really focus on it. You know, I think some people here have their minds made up. I hope you be a little more open-minded. At least consider what I'm having to say. The amount of THC, the part of marijuana that makes a person high, has gone from 2% in the 1970s to 25 to 30% today. This is not the marijuana of Jerry Garcia, the Grateful Dead, and other guys that uh, were famous for smoking reefer. The stronger potency of marijuana has met the frequent use of marijuana head on. So it's stronger and people are more frequently using it. There are not more casual users of the drug since it was legalized. Instead, there are more frequent users and the frequency of use has exploded. In 2006, for example, about 3 million Americans stated that they used marijuana at least 300 times a year. By 2017, the number grew to 8 million Americans that were using marijuana at least 300 times a year. This explosion in use, coupled with the potency of the pot that's being smoked, has led to a medical term called, somebody else referenced it before, cannabis use disorder. But nobody ever talks about it. Well, you may think cannabis use disorder, so what? Let me answer your question, so what? As more people get more loaded on reefer because of heavy use, the number of people with cannabis use disorder suffer from more occurrences of paranoia of schizophrenia, more psychotic episodes. Of course, as more frequent users experience paranoia and schizophrenia, more violence occurs. Frequent users are not more relaxed. They are not calmer. They are not more chill. Not true. They are more violent. Before recreational marijuana took hold in 2014, advocates promised that legalization would lead to a reduction in violent crime. This prediction proved to be totally false. Totally false. Indeed, the first four states to legalize marijuana, Alaska, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington, witnessed marked increases in aggravated assaults and murder. Sadly, many government leaders ignore the risks of marijuana use. Sadly, many government leaders are totally convinced that the legalization of pot will produce great profits, great revenue streams for states or for towns. This is untrue. It is untrue because marijuana revenues are, according to a very recent study from a very reputable group, Marijuana potential revenues 
are reliant on consumer behavior. Consumer behavior, when it comes to marijuana buying, is not predictable. And it is not predictable because, one, many users already get their supply of weed from the black market, which offers much lower prices to consumers. Legalization of marijuana has not reduced the black market. It has increased the black market. And this is true in every state in the country that legalized marijuana. I don't think some of you realize that. There are more people in back alleys selling marijuana than there was before marijuana was legalized. Many users who buy on the legitimate market already have an allegiance to a supplier in a neighboring town. Neptune Township and Eaton Town already have loyal consumers. And then there is how much tax should be used in, uh, uh, for pot. The taxing situation for pot is so difficult to predict that Nevada, California, and Colorado have been forced to change their tax collection policies when it comes to marijuana sales. I have another thing that I'd like to talk to you about. It has to do with the fact that I'm from Ocean Township. I'll try to wrap it up. I, I came here at the uh, <laughs> Thanks to my girlfriend, because I just recently had surgery to replace my left hip. One of the things that makes me proud uh, about uh, <coughs> about being raised in Ocean Township comes when people from other communities tell me something positive about our community of gracious living. A comment like, your police officers are really polite. If you're stopped by an officer, you're treated like a human being, not a suspected criminal. A comment like, your recreation programs are great. There's so many activities for so many of your residents. A comment like, ocean schools are terrific. Caring teachers, caring administrators, caring coaches. A comment like, Ocean Township, as was referenced earlier by our mayor, has without a doubt the greatest community-wide events and at least the state of New Jersey. I prefer to hear comments like those and not, yeah, Ocean Township, they got pot shops, right? You are adults, you have opinions. Take the focus off what you think. Take the focus off what you think and think of the word emblem. You see that right there? That's what Mr. Hazelrig designed for Ocean Township. That's an emblem. That's emblematic of Ocean Township. Kids from all ages who call Ocean Township their home are sent a message. What message are you as the leaders of this great community sending to our young people? What emblem do you want for Ocean Township? <clears throat> what do you want Ocean Township to be noted for? Do you want Ocean Township to be noted for Kenny Pickett, a rising star NFL quarterback? I do. Do you want Ocean to be noted as the hometown of Mike Uslin, the person who gained the rights to every Batman movie ever made and every Batman movie that will ever be made? I went to school with him right here in Ocean Township, the hometown of Abby Taylor, who co-created Playa Bowls. Or do you want to send a message to young people that Ocean Township is like every other shore community. Pot's available here. Edible marijuana, you can get it here. Let's get high in Ocean. Rich, we gotta cut it back. If you can, we've already gone over a few minutes. Please folks, I humbly ask you to consider what I have said to you tonight about the horrible dangers of marijuana and the emblem you wish to bestow upon this town. I love this town. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Anyone else wishing to be heard, please step up to the microphone. State your name and address for the record. My name is Gianna Rosano. I live at 7 Theater Crossing in Red Bank. Um, 
I know, I know Jesse, I used to actually work here um, in the tax court's office, office and the tax office, so very familiar with Ocean Township. I work now for the Prevention Coalition of Monmouth County. We're located in Eatontown. We just transferred. We were in West Long Branch. So some of the things we do are provide education around all types of substance use. Um, and so a lot of things have been spoken about, so I don't want to super reiterate a lot of the things for you today. I know we're short on time, and I want to be mindful of all your time tonight. But I do want to just make the emphasis for youth. Um, I do a lot of youth programming, so I run one of the youth diversion programs, the only one that we actually have here in Monmouth County. Um, and so with that and the law enforcement and the things that come along with legalized marijuana in general, um, there has been a lot of confusion of how we go about um, taking care of our youth that are abusing. Um, the percentage of school drug and alcohol policy violations of marijuana in 2021 were 63%. I'm getting more and more calls from school SACs, um, school resource officers, law enforcement officers, saying that we have youth that we can't refer as a state house adjustment, um, but they need resources um, because of the usage. We have called for usages in schools, specifically from edibles and marijuana, um, through vape pens and things of that nature. So we are able to provide that programming and through that we get a lot of information. And again, across all towns we see one youth, at least from every town really. Um, but especially in these towns that have adopted these ordinances and these policies, we're seeing that youth are saying, well, it's in my house. It is unregulated, people are buying it, it's legal for my parents to buy it, it's in my house and I can reach it. And that's how I'm getting it or I'm getting it from a friend or someone's buying it. Again, very similar to what we're seeing with use usage of, of alcohol, right? So we're talking about, again, that access we are now giving to the youth is something just to be mindful of. Um, again, kind of reiterating, a big part of this is the education and the planning portion of this. What, whatever decision you make as a council today, um, it's really, really important because once you open up that can of worms, it kind of just goes everywhere. And we learned today through a couple of people that were able to speak that we see with tobacco retailer and enforcement, it's not the strongest that we have seen to date, right? You saw all of those goodies um, that people are able to get their hands on. This is across the county that we are seeing this, and it's only getting stronger in those counties that have um, adopted ordinances of marijuana. So strongly urge to see, I know the New Jersey Prevention Network provided you with a municipal planning guide. Going over that before any action is taken, because again, once that is open, it kind of is a lot. Um, a lot of people coming to you, a lot of opportunity coming to the town, but um, with that said, if it's not enforced, regulated, um, understanding where those funds can go back to the community and education is great, but understanding that are we going to provide that education for prevention me measures for our youth? Understand the consequences to usage, not only to youth, but also to adults. Um, there's a program that has been given in a couple of schools about like, it's called, it's funny as it may sound, not your mom is marijuana. Um, because of the potency differences that we are seeing. Um, adults and parents specifically are not understanding the educational portion of what marijuana looks like now and cannabis looks like now to what they were seeing when they were younger. Um, the difference between that is striking. Um, so people are really getting a big usage of that. There's a large misconception with youth as well that um, when I talked to them, they said that they, they started or other people they know have started due to anxiety or mental health issues that they are facing and they're self-coping. Um, right? They're deciding for themselves that this is how it happens. When we actually know the facts and studies show that the risk of mental health issues increase um, with usage for anxiety, depression, and psychosis in all of these cases and especially highly for youth. Um, so we're seeing people that are self-medicating and not understanding the education, the studies, the, everything that comes with that. We do know medical marijuana exists and there are things that people are doing properly and there's no dick to that. But we want to make sure that everyone is educated on the topic of what this is and what this works for. Um, so having things done in a proper manner is fantastic, but if people do not understand the risks that they are taking, it becomes another problem. Another thing that I just want to mention as well is the consequences of driving under the influence of marijuana. That becomes another concern and the things that go into that. Uh, when law enforcement officers stop, that is an additional step that is being taken. We work closely with um, some of the chiefs in the towns as well as law enforcement in our coalition 
and that is not a simple stop. That is not something that every officer is trained to do or deal with. So that is an additional cost to make sure your officers are trained in that information. I will wrap up. Um, Thank you. And so I just wanted again have that emphasis, and then I also wanted to provide my services as a coalition that we could also do surveys. So I know we spoke a little bit about the vague nature of the um, question on the ballot. We can provide you a free survey that we are able to give to your town and also calculate ourselves that will allow you to ask your town and your residents specific questions on if this is something that they would like in their town and if they understand the consequences or would like more education on the topic itself. So we just wanted to add that as a resource to all of you and thank you so much for your time. Can thank I ask you. a point of clarification? Because yeah. you I, you mentioned um, you've noticed an increase. Have you looked at specific towns that have like Eaton Town versus Ocean versus Neptune? An increase of specific like problematic mm -hmm. behavior or things. Um, so we work with alliances. So uh, every town has the opportunity to have a drug prevention alliance. Um, Neptune is one of those towns that has an alliance. Um, so we worked closely with them on understanding kind of the consequences. We also work in schools. So we are privileged to um, have the opportunity to go into Neptune schools and ask these questions and educate youth on the topic, as well as work with the Adult Alliance um, to do these take polls and information as well, which is something we offer to every town. So that is something that we can do here as well, um, if given the opportunity to, of course. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing or none, do I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2443? I'll make a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2443. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2443. I'd like to move to adopt Ordinance 2443 and publish according to law. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Echera? No. Fisher? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Terry? No. Neplitani? Before I vote, um, I just want to make a quick comment that, yes, very controversial, and yes, um, I heard everybody's points. And I know Rich personally. I know his background. I know what he has had to deal with, so I'm very empathetic to what he had to live with. However, I too grew up with that in my household with two brothers. And I watched one of them spiral out of control. The other one moved away. But I never blamed cannabis for it. I blamed the people my brother was hanging around that got him hooked on other stuff that ultimately took his life. It wasn't the cannabis. I studied up on this. I looked at it. I polled a lot of people. This was really a thought process that wasn't done haphazardly. So therefore, I am going to vote yes on this ordinance because I think that at this point, it's the right thing to do. Yes. Ordinance passes. Ordinance 2440. What? Oh. Um, um, Ordinance passes. Ordinance 2444, an ordinance amending Chapter 21 of the Comprehensive Land Development Ordinance of the Township of Ocean. Can someone open public discussion on Ordinance 2444? I'd like to open public discussion on Ordinance 2444. Second. Second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neblitani? Yes. Uh, anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2444, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address. Seeing here none, do I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2444? I'd like to make a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2444. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neblitani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2444. I'd like to move to adopt Ordinance 2444 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neblitani? Yes. Ordinance passes. Ordinance 2445, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 14 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean 1965, entitled Swimming Pools. 
Someone please open public discussion on Ordinance 2445. I'd like to open public discussion on Ordinance 2445. Second. Second. Roll call. Echera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Nablutani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2445, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address. Hi, I'm Trisha Donovan, 161 Delaware Avenue. I did no due diligence on this ordinance. Can you just give us a little... Uh, you know, a little synopsis of what this is about? It's, in, okay. it's increasing the fees oh, at the pool. It? Yeah. No step back? No, no, no. It's increasing the fees at this this republic. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2445? Seeing here none, do I have a motion to close this public discussion on Ordinance 2445? I'd like to close public discussion on Ordinance 2445. Second. Second. Roll call. Echera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neplitani? Yes. Uh, action on Ordinance 2445. I'd like to move to adopt Ordinance 2445 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. Echera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neplitani? Yes. Ordinance 2445 passes. Ordinance 2446, which is an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter four, uh, 16 of the revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965, entitled... Parks and playgrounds. I'd like Some, to. Um, uh, someone open public discussion on Ordinance 2446. I'd like to open public discussion on Ordinance 2446. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neplitani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2446, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address. Seeing here none, can I have a motion to close public discussion on Ordinance 2446? I'd like to close ordinance, uh, public discussion on Ordinance 2446. And second. <laughs> Roll call. Chair? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Appletani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2446. I'd like to move to adopt Ordinance 2446 and publish according to law. Second. Second. Roll call. A chair? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Appletani? Yes. Uh, ordinance 2446 passes. Introductions of ordinances, starting with Ordinance 2447, which is an ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean 1965, entitled Administration. Do I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 2447? I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2447. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? No. Don. Oh, I'm sorry. No. No. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Naplitani? Yes. Uh, that will have its public hearing on the 11th of January, 2024. Ordinance 2448, which is an ordinance amending Chapter 2, Administration, and Chapter 7, Property Maintenance and Housing, of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965. Someone please introduce Ordinance 2448. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2448. Second. Second. Roll call. Echera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neplitani? Yes. That too will have its public hearing on January 11, 2024. Ordinance 2449, which is an ordinance authorizing the sale of a deed of easement to the New Jersey Department of Transportation pursuant to the Local Lands and Buildings Law NJSA 40A colon 12-13B1. Uh, someone introduce Ordinance 2449. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2449. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neplitani? Yes. That, too, will have its public hearing on the 11, on uh, January 11, 2024. And finally, Ordinance 2450, which is an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a gift of real property. Someone please introduce Ordinance 2450. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2450. Second. Second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Neplitani? Yes. Uh, that, too, will have its public hearing on January 11th, 2024. And that concludes our formal agenda. Do we have anyone wishing to be heard on anything germane to the Township of Ocean? You can step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Mike Zemo. I live at 1101 Roselle Avenue. Uh, I've been a 
resident here in Ocean Township for over 30 years, between Oakhurst and Montemassa. I, I grew up in Deal. I was a year old when I was moved into the house I lived in. And uh, I've noticed the traffic has increasingly got out of control in the whole area around here. Uh, I uh, myself have had many close calls, and one of them was right in front of my own driveway. I was uh, backing up to go into my driveway, and a car came up that road and then went right between me and my driveway. I stopped just in time, otherwise he would have plowed into my door. Uh, it's increasingly getting dangerous out on the roads here. Uh, the police, I'm sure, are doing what they can. I think they could do more. I think they could be out there in places when the traffic is at its heights, like uh, 8 o'clock till like 10.30 in the morning, and uh, 3 o'clock till about 5.30 in the evening. I live uh, on Roosevelt Avenue, and in the afternoon, it's like a raceway as they turn off Logan and turn on the Roselle. The Roselle is a straight strip to Mammoth Road. Mm -hmm. No stops. And there's no place for them to worry about stopping. And when they turn that corner, they're flying. I was out there raking leaves today, and there was a few cars that went past me while I was raking, and the wind rushed up by me. And uh, it's like that every day. And there's never police in the area. Uh, I've, I've been out there all week raking leaves. I've seen one police car the whole week. And he was following an Asbury Park ambulance yesterday down Roselle Avenue. That's the only time I see police. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's getting out of control. I, and you made statement oh, some months ago in the coaster about how you wanted to do something about the traffic problem. I don't know if you've done anything, because I haven't seen a difference in the traffic. Even now with that, it's you know getting ready to go into winter. When a resident comes here and complains about their road having too much traffic, we always direct that to the chief of police and their traffic department so that they can look into that. So now that your issue has been brought forth, we will bring that to the chief as well, and he'll give that to the traffic department. Well, now can you talk to him and try to get some kind of strategy going for the police to be a little more on the scene? Uh, I, I know they take breaks. Most of the time they're in Palaya Park, or Coltsfield, or anywhere that they can find a place to sort of pull off the road and not be seen. But I think a, a way to stop people from speeding would be if they took a break on a side street like where I am on Bloomfield Avenue. It's a block in from the Logan Road onto Roselle. And if they sat there with their lights going while they're on their break, I'm sure people would slow down right away because they fear that they're going to get pulled over by the police. But Mr. Brown, you can have that uh, discussion with the chief? Certainly will, Mayor. Thank you. And I, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's getting out of control. And before this, this coming summer for the 24th season occurs, because I, I, I think the traffic this past summer was the worst I've ever seen in this town. I saw people blown through red lights and everything this year like, like they're not there. I had an occasion just on Sunset Avenue today. I was crossing over heading west. And the cars would not stop coming out, even when we had the green light. I had to go swerve around them and then around, because they were just coming out in front of me. They wouldn't stop. And it, there's never a policeman anywhere to be seen it at the heights of the traffic. And I, I can't understand it. I, I mean, I know they're out there, but I never see them on my street. Uh, maybe I'm not a low you know, trouble area, I don't know, but uh, it's, it seems to me that something's got to be done soon. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir.
Anyone else wishing to be heard on anything germane to the township of Ocean? Yes, sir. State your name and address again, please. Uh, Thank Matthew you. Matthew Solomon, 38 Tudor Drive. Um, when it comes to the to the retail cannabis location, um, one of the things that's needed for a conditional license is a resolution of support from the town council. Um, and I have no idea how any of the processes work for here. So is there some kind of resource or, or is someone that I uh, can reach out to? to you can reach out to the township manager tomorrow. Okay. I'll give you the information. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing here none, before we make a motion to adjourn, I'd like to wish everyone on behalf of the Township Council to have a wonderful holiday season. We look forward to seeing everybody again in 2024. Enjoy, be safe. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Achura? Yes. John Lynn? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napatani? Yes.